What is the true church? Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This, according to Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. The gates of hell means the grave. Said another way, the true church would never die out. Now that means the church Jesus founded exists today, everywhere I go. People ask me what I believe today's primary challenges of the church are. I completed a recent book called The Challenge of the Church, provocative discussions of vital modern issues. Today I will be diving into the primary subject matter and trust the Lord with strengthen, challenge, convict and encourage you. These things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of truth. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verses 14 and 15. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. We are meeting against the backdrop of mounting world tension. This hate-filled world is desperate for a decent way of life. Now I'm too ignorant to speak wisely and I trust I'm too wise to speak ignorantly. But a man does not have to be listed in the who's who to know what's what today. As he stands with a newspaper in one hand and a Bible in the other, with his eyes focused on a television and his ears tuned to the radio, he can hear of walls and rumors of walls rumbling around the world. He can see astounding world events tumbling over each other in rapid succession, rushing on to ruin. Civilization is torn with degradation and flirting with doom and disaster. High-mindedness runs the streets like a mad dog, beating an uncertain path. Selfishness has evaporated the milk of human kindness. Pain and panic are chasing each other like June bugs playing in the summer sun. Paradise has been turned into pandemonium and puny men are still piddling around with passing days. Now under the magic of science, distance has disappeared. We no longer measure distance by the miles, but by the hours. Los Angeles is 10 hours from London. That simply says that isolationism is dead and buried without the slightest hope of a resurrection. You see, science has given us proximity, but it cannot give us community. And proximity without community spells trouble, and that's where we are now. Whether you realize it or not, we are interdependent and we are interrelated. We cannot live without each other, and unless we learn to live with each other, it is doubtful that we shall live at all. If you really want to live, you must love God with all of your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. And then you must love your neighbor just as you love yourself. You must love God and neighbor in that order. God must come first. You see, in the past few years, We've been trying to get men to live peaceably one with the other. Trying to get men to love one another. Trying to get men to act like brothers. You know, men quit acting like brothers in Cain and Abel today. You know, we're talking about our greatest problem is a skin problem. No, it's not a skin problem, it's a sin problem. See, Cain and Abel were the sons of the same father and mother. Thereby they were of the same race. And Cain killed Abel. 
And if you think it's just a skin problem, if you're going down a dark stretch of the road at night and you hear some footsteps behind you, you don't wonder what color that man is. You want to know the condition of his heart. The challenge of the church in a disturbed social order is that those who are dedicated to the proposition that Christ is all will not allow the doubts and difficulties of these dark days to disturb nor dishearten them. The challenge of the church in this confused social order is that men still stand upright in a world that is upset. The challenge of the church in this confused social order is come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. The church is a necessity to all prize peace, progress, and purity. She lifts the fallen, relieves the burdened, strengthens the weak, and helps the distressed. She gives hope, help, and healing to the sick, lifts the load for the tired and weary who journey along the road. The church affirms that Christ is the way, the only one qualified to be a suitable, a compassionate, and all-sufficient Savior. He is the founder of the city of God. He is the furnisher of the privileges of His people. He is the finisher of all men's faith. He is loftier and lovelier than all leaders, more durable and desirable than all dignitaries. Every trend that leads to triumph has been tutored by the victorious virtue of His perfect light. Every tie of affection has been knit by His kind and kingly love. The fame of His excellent name is reflected through the flaming stars of the heavens, the flying birds of the air, the flowing streams of the hills, the fruitful trees of the fields, and the fragrant flowers of springtime. David said, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the fundament showeth his handiwork. My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. No far-seeing telescope can bring into visibility the coastline of his shoulder supplies. No barrier can hinder him from pouring out his blessings. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He stands in the solitude of himself. He's august and he's unique. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He is the supreme problem in high criticism. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He is the cardinal necessity for spiritual religion. He's the miracle of the age. He's he, yes, he is. He is the superlative of everything good that you choose to call him. I wish I could describe him to you, but he's in the... Yeah! 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 He's indescribable. Yes, he is. Good God.